Welcome everybody. I want to uh, thank uh, John Sonow for coming over today. Um, he's one of our preferred um, title uh, people. He, he's the sales manager for Empire West and, and they do extremely good work for us. Uh, we're very fortunate to, to work closely with them on, on many of our trans transactions. So today he's going to be talking about the different ways to take title in Arizona, both residential and commercial. And uh, without further ado, here's John. Thanks, Mike. I appreciate that. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Proud to be here supporting Gercheck Realty and shedding some value and education today about how to take title. And the title is something very important that a lot of people don't think about or don't really know what the different options are, and it could have a big impact for them in the future. So I'm going to start with residential. We got up here. We said good to go. All right. We're going to start with residential. In Arizona, we're a community property state. So if, if I buy a property with my wife, we automatically own half and half interest. And uh, if something happens to me, the property uh, would have to go through probate for my half, and same thing for her. So if we do nothing with community property, we each have a half in it. You do have to go through probate, which can be costly and uh, take a lot of time in the event of the, you know, the death of one of the spouses. So it's, uh, it's a good idea to get survivorship rights, which we'll talk about next. But that's community property if you do nothing your community property for a husband and wife. So for a husband and wife and I want to have survivorship rights, I got a couple of options. I got community property with right of survivorship where again each spouse holds a half interest in the property but say I have a half interest and I die, my half would automatically go to my spouse and vice versa and avoiding probate, again saving time and saving money because of the survivorship rights. The title company would prepare what's called a community property with right of survivorship acceptance that the husband and wife would sign and that that would get recorded along with the deed conveying title to them to give them those survivorship rights. Very important to get that in record. And then if I pass away, uh, my wife would just need to record a death certificate that would show that I passed away. She would then have the property uh, and could sell it, could encumber it, what she wished. She would not have to go through probate, save her a lot of time. So community property is for married couples only and allows them to have survivorship rights, which is very helpful. Joint tenancy is right of survivorship. That is for uh, couples and non-married couples. So it was created for people that weren't married to be able to have survivorship rights uh, as well. So say, you know, me and my sister, my brother, and we all wanted to buy a property together and uh, we wanted to have survivorship rights. So if something happened to one of us, the property would go to the surviving uh, property owners. It wouldn't go to someone else or go through probate. So we can hold title as joint tenants with right of survivorship. Uh, couples could also hold title this way as well, but they usually would go community property for right of survivorship versus joint tenancy. But that's how joint tenancy work. If there's three of us, if we're all joint tenants, uh, if I pass away, then my brother and my sister would then each have a half interest in the property. If my brother would then pass away, my sister would then have the property totally owned by herself. She gets sell and cumber. So again, avoids probate, deals with some estate planning uh, and, and gives different options for you. So that's joint tenancy with right of survivorship. Tenancy in common is another way to hold title uh, if you have, say, multiple people that have a different interest. Like I could buy property with Mike and with Linda and uh, with Scott and we could all have different in interests in the property. Like say I had a 20% and say Mike had a 50% and Linda had a 20% and Scott had a 10%. It just has to equal 100%. But that's how we could all go into a property together and invest with our different interests and makes it nice and clear. It's called Tenants in Common or TIC, T-I-C, you'll hear of. That's what that's about. Again, if any of us dies though, then it does go through probate though. So there's no survivorship rights with tenants in common. But that's called TIC. We see that in residential. We sometimes see it in commercial. Um, so that's kind of an overview of what you mostly see on the residential side of closings. And so. Mike, if you would go ahead to the next slide, we're going to talk about some different ways to hold title on commercial transactions. So you can see here there's a few different choices. General partnership is probably one that, that some of you have heard of, right? I get together with someone else and we're going to form a partnership and you know, as long as we can get along and don't fight, we can make decisions. That's, it's a good way to do things and it allows people to pool their money together and be able to buy a lot more property. So partnership defined two or more persons in a business for profit. You could have ten partners but you got to have at least two to form a partnership. That's a general partnership. A limited partnership is, is similar, but that involves where you have at least one general partner and one limited partner. A limited partner, they're just investing money. They don't run the, the, uh, the operation, the project, 
but they have an equitable interest in it. Their maximum downside is whatever they invest in it. The general partner, that's the person that's responsible for the project. They make the decisions. They can be liable uh, for that, but they make the decisions. You could have one general partner and ten limited partners, which, which is not uncommon, but that's how a limited partnership that limits liability. If you have at least one general, one limited versus a general partnership, they're all just general partners. There's no limited partners. Corporation is another way that commonly people hold title uh, when they're buying a commercial property. It's in corporation, you have shareholders, you issue stock, you file the paperwork with the corporation commission, and uh, it's a good way to hold, to hold title. Uh, there are some tax issues. You get some double taxation with corporations, though, so some people don't like to hold title that way. It used to be very, very common. Now we see more of the limited liability companies and LLPs and LLLPs are more common now to, to avoid double taxation and create less liability. Limited liability corporation, also called the LLC, is filed with the Secretary of State. That's a very common way. And even on the residential side, the people will take title in LLCs. They'll create LLCs for their, you know, even a two-member LLC for a husband and wife could hold title that way, uh, reduce liability, and provide tax through uh, on the taxes on that. So limited liability corporation, uh, very, very common. And uh, probably what we see probably the most you know, in Arizona for investment properties. Limited liability partnership. Is a, is, a, is a newer way of holding title. It's like a limited liability. It's a partnership and it's like a, a, a corporation. So it's kind of a combination. Again, it limits liability. It's kind of the theme here. How can we hold title, have different interests, protect ourselves from liability if something goes wrong uh, with that, and allowing the taxes to pass through to us individually. So that's a very common way. Limited liability partnership uh, combines liability protection of a corporate structure with the ease of a partnership. So. That's a very, very common way. And limited liability, limited partnership, that's a lot of L's. You know, I have trouble saying that sometimes. There's so many L's in there. And this, I see a lot, uh, especially with Gertrude and Jackson, we see a lot of that. Uh, and that's probably the newest way of holding title. Uh, there's at least one general partner and at least one limited partner. And limited partners, again, are, they're usually monitored. Only the general partners handle the day-to-day -day operations. So it's a lot of ways, right? There's a lot of ways to take title to a property and what's better or worse, it depends on your situation. It depends on the property. It depends on how many people are involved. It depends if you all get along together. It depends on if someone's got a lot of money to invest and someone's got a little amount to invest. How do they all benefit and get their, their adequate share? And for liability, right? So it's a good idea to have a really good CPA, a good tax accountant, a good team. As you check Realty has got some great partners that they can refer you to to go over this with you and see what works best for your situation to protect you, save you the most on taxes, and help you run your business properly. So I appreciate you letting me come here today, Mike, speak to you guys and educate some of our consumers out there on ways to take title. I'm John Sano, Empire West Title Sales Manager. I'm office at 22nd and Camelback. And uh, I appreciate any questions. You can reach me at 602-538-6399. Thanks, Mike. Thank you, John.